Hello, my loves. How are we on this fine day? I've got my coffee here. That first sip feeling. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, the idea on this video is sort of a makeup spring cleaning session. Uh, it's not like a full scale declutter, but basically I've put things in this bag that are on the chopping block, you know, and I thought I'd do a full face with these things and kind of decide as we go what will stay and what will go. Sometimes we go through our collection and it just feels good to like get rid of it, get rid of it, get rid of it, but there are those items that maybe deserve a second chance or you just don't really remember, you know? So that's what's up with all this today. Um, it's a mix of drugstore and high end. It's gonna seem probably pretty random, but I think that's the fun of it. I've already got all my skincare on today. Do I have an eye cream? There? First thing I grabbed, I've got way too many primers currently. Um, a lot of them I really love, but this one from Milani called Chill Out Soothing Primer. It has wild oat extract and ceramides. It's silicone free. I thought, you know, do I even know if that's truly cooling or whatever? It really looks like a silicone ish primer. It looks kind of like Smashbox's signature primer, but I don't know, guys. It's smoothing. It feels nice as I apply it. I don't feel any particular cooling benefit, though. And with a decent amount of really good primers, I don't think this is a must. If I felt some kind of whoosh, it's really waking me up this morning type vibe, maybe I'd have kept it. Here's a coverage product that I simply haven't touched in quite some time. And I remember liking it, but now I'm kind of comparing it to a new slate of things that I have on hand. And it's the Derma Blend CC Cream Continuous Correction Full Coverage SPF 50 up to 24 hour wear. Um, I have this in the shade 35N light to medium one. And so I just thought, let's go for this today. Let's give it a shot. So I shook it up in case anything separated. I'm giving myself a large pearl sized amount and I'm gonna blend this in with a beauty blender today. Just cause I do seem to remember this having a decent amount of coverage. Here we go. Oh, it does look nice. Shade is maybe just a hint darker than my current skin tone, but throughout the summer, I could see that being really ideal. Gosh, it looks really pretty. It's covering, would I say it's actually full coverage? Maybe not with this application method, but it's a very like strong medium coverage. Does anybody out there have a sleep number bed? We have one. We got one at the very start of the year. It was like, I think January 2nd or something we got it. So we've had an amazing bed to sleep on this year. And there's an app that gives you a sleep score every morning. And sometimes I really don't agree with it. I think it very accurately shows if you've left the bed, like you went to the bathroom, it, it'll say bed exit. I am making an exit from the bed now. Or it'll definitely sense moments where you've been tossing and turning and stuff. But like, I, I got a really good night's sleep. I went to bed and I was thinking, oh yeah, this is gonna be a good sleep score because I'm going to bed a little bit earlier than usual. And somehow Bub outscored me by like 10 points and we got up at the same time. Don't be a competitive sleep score person like me. This looks really pretty, actually. Um, it's kind of like a natural finish, it seems like. It's not overly matte, but it's not not really glowy either. And I feel like this could be good for summertime. That SPF 50 in it is really good to have. Um, really leaning towards keeping that one. Here's a concealer I have not reached for in a long time. That Big Daddy Anastasia ABH Concealer Magic Touch. I have shade four. I remember this shade being pretty light, but maybe I've gone lighter recently because now it's not seeming that light to me. I don't know. Um, it's pretty full coverage. We're probably gonna blend this in with the sponge as well, but the concealer drawer is truly overflowing. I need help. I should be getting rid of more than just this, but I actually did go through it fairly recently. Okay, we're just gonna go for it here with the sponge. Who's using this one every day? Let me know if any of the things I randomly grabbed are some of your everyday staples. This is really giving me like tart shape tape vibes and the shade that's not bad. Like, look how nicely brightening that is and full coverage to boot. Sometimes I'm too good at justifying things though. Get around that nose redness, that's looking good. Look at that under eye. Like, I'm loving that brightness there. A little brightness on the chin. I don't know, y'all. That's better than I remembered. And that shade, like maybe at one point in time, I wasn't willing to go this bright. And I thought, ooh, that's a really light concealer. And it kind of kept me from pulling it out. But really it's not, it's not that bad. I'm very much into that. I pulled out a loose powder. Um, this is the Huda Easy Bake Loose Powder in the shade Cupcake. And the thing about this, I don't love the little mesh thing in it because 
I feel like it makes me really try hard to pick up powder and I don't always know like am I reaching the powder in there like you're supposed to just be able to press down I guess with your puff and I am getting some but exactly how much like I don't know I'm gonna use that to set my under eye and again I don't like I can shake some out into the top a very fine amount will shake out I mean that's that's okay I can do that the tone is, I would say is like a fair powder tone but is this really needed? Like I've got a lot of great loose powders. Packaging is just, it's just fussy to me. I don't know, once upon a time, maybe I liked that. I don't really like it anymore. That, see it's, it's squishy, you push into it, you're pushing down, you're thinking, am I, am I getting some? Let me get the whole T-zone with it because this is the only powder I pulled out. Okay, uh, going over the nose, I can see with one little tap in, yes, I do get some, but like it's kind of hard to bake with it. It's called easy bake, but, like, if you're truly wanting to bake and get a lot up under there, it's hard to get a lot. Anybody know what I'm saying there? I don't know. It frustrates me a little bit. Every time I use that, I'm a little bit frustrated by it. And now I'm going to just I'll dust away if I did get any excess. I don't think I really did. But I do think the complexion looks smashing right now. For a bronzer thing, I pulled out this. This is from Beauty Blender. It's the Bounce Magic Fit Creamy Bronzer and Highlighter Duo. So you have a cream bronzer here, and then you have a cream highlighter up top. Yeah, both like cream textures, and there's a little mirror as well. The bronzer shade is Topaz, and the highlighter shade is Champagne. I'm going to go into this. I mean, should I be going into it with a Beauty Blender? I don't know. I'm going to go into it with my Sephora 56. Okay, I picked up a lot. Shade is making me feel like very classic bronzer, toasty. It's got some warmth, but I don't think it's too warm. Just getting it blended in. It doesn't look super like dewy on the skin. It actually looks rather matte. I got a lot on and it blended with ease. Let's do some more of that. Really not upset with the blending whatsoever. It's going on easily. Would I want to blend this in with a sponge? Like considering this is not a beauty blender, this is my Milani. You know, a sponge can do it. I feel like if you guys saw my drawer of cream bronzers right now, you'd be like, Em, you don't need it. Good application, but not a total wow moment with that. Um, I'm gonna come back to the highlight. Maybe the highlight will turn the tide. It'll either be what makes or breaks it. And then for blush, we have another cream product that just simply hasn't been reached for in a while. And I think I remember the last time I used it, I thought, is this a little bit dry? And it's the Tarte um, Breezy Cream Blush like from that C line and the shade is pink sky and this is what it looks like it's a nice little dusty rose has a little mirror in the compact i can see where i thought it felt a little dry let's see how it goes on just straight from my little mini sephora 56. it's funny because like these products i put on the bronzer was a cream this is a cream they're not giving any like creamy radiance to the skin they both happen to be very very matte what do we think color's nice I'm thinking kind of average. I'm thinking could take it or leave it. I'm not having like a revelation over this, like, oh my gosh, I've been missing out by not grabbing for this. It's giving just okay for me, dog. Not bad, not awesome. Back to this guy. And there was a little like indent there, a little beauty blender shaped indent. Um, let's lightly add some of that, that highlighter. Mm. I do like that glow. Oh, I did have a weird feeling when I woke up this morning. My eyes felt really dry. Why is that? Weren't they supposed to be shut all night? What happened? They felt dry. I didn't have a fan blowing on me or anything. I don't know, guys. Questions, comments, concerns? It looks smooth. I feel like this is kind of a bulky little product in my drawer, actually, and I don't think I absolutely need to keep this. The effect is fine. I'm just not head over heels in love. I think I can let that go. I feel like I can probably let the blush go also. That's right, it's getting cutthroat here. I pulled out a setting spray. I was like, oh, I have this Photo Focus Matte Finish setting spray. I love this little spraying mechanism, but do we notice, ew. The thing's totally getting stuck at the bottom. No. Ah! One good spray, but it's getting... Ah! <laughs> okay. Goodbye. 
I have a regular one. It works great. This one's got some issues. I'm glad we uncovered those today. As for the face so far, what's staying is the Dermablend CC, the ABH Concealer. I think those both did a really good job. I'm letting go of this primer, this Beauty Blender combo product, this cream blush. I feel kind of bad getting rid of this. I feel like I have a ton of product in there. I do really like the tone. I think I'm gonna let this stay a little longer and I'll get rid of this. So I'm getting rid of four out of the seven things. That's pretty good, right? And then we continue with just grabbing for things that maybe haven't been used in a while that we need that refresher on. This Makeup Forever Aqua Resist Brow Filler. This is in the shade 40 Medium Brown. What we have here is a double-ended pencil with kind of a thick teardrop shaped design there. So I'm just gonna go over the brow and add me some color. It's transferring down pretty easily, feeling a little creamier and maybe a little more pigmented than a lot of typical brow pencils. Uh, not seeing any signs of like, oh, it's been drying out. Like it's really good. That's nice. And then how is it when you brush it through? Oh, that's a next level spoolie. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All spoolies are pretty much built the same. Okay, I don't see any reason to get rid of this. And considering the small footprint a brow pencil takes up in your collection, if it's decent, why not keep it? It's harder with some of those awkwardly giant size products, like a big old loose powder. There's just other like packaging styles that can really give you pause when it comes to, do I keep it, do I chuck it? I know you're dying to know what I made for Bub's meal prep this week. He really, really liked it. I did honey sriracha turkey meatballs. So I made these turkey meatballs. They were very easy. I'd actually never made from scratch meatballs before, but these were easy and quick. And then you do make like a glaze that goes over them. And I put like six to seven meatballs. It just looked right as the serving. I made some quinoa and I drizzled some of my extra glaze over that. And then for a vegetable, I really like the broccoli stir fry mixes you can get. Walmart's great value brand, it's really good. There's like some mushrooms in there, some broccoli, just a lot of good variety. Whether or not you go with kind of an Asian twist with your meal, it doesn't really matter. Like it's just a good mixed vegetable thing. So put those on the side. I think it's a pretty wholesome meal. Other options to like kind of put on the side of those Meatballs would be like maybe some riced cauliflower, actual rice. Um, this is staying, by the way. I think the brow turned out great. Super easy, very soft, um, very manageable. And I do know like things that say aqua resist from Makeup Forever really do last. My NYX Thick It Stick It, I do reach for this on and off pretty often. This is the shade Espresso, but I do just think it's running out. Um, I would not repurchase this. I don't love how big the brush is. It gives some hold, but it's not as good as a Maybelline Brow Fast Sculpt or the Hard Candy Teddy Brow, which like that just holds like crazy. Did I say this is the shade Espresso? Decent, but not wowing me, and I'm gonna let this go because I think I pretty much used it up. Milani eyeshadow primer, not up for consideration. Just want to use a comfort zone product right now. And I've got some bulky little eyeshadow trios that I'm going to make the call on today. Talking about these from Maybelline. These are the shadow blocks and I have them in, this is the West 4th Perry Street one. And this is the North 3rd Bedford Avenue one. Does anybody know these locations? Am I giving up anybody's address? Basically, we've got a very mega packaged up little eyeshadow trio and it's bulky in my drawers. This one gives you like a matte beige, a shimmery champagne and a deep brown. This one gives a mauve, a really pretty shimmer there, and a deep kind of plum. Okay, let's give it a go. I'm saying immediately no to this one because we've got two light shades here that are basically the same lightness. One's just shimmer, one's matte, and then you got the one dark shade. That's not impressing me. This one at least is giving me some intrigue. So we're gonna go into that mauve color and just see what happens. It's like, yes, Maybelline, you succeeded in catching my eye with this, but I am now frustrated that I have to house it. Like, Maybelline, do more things like this. I feel like probably every shade I'm using in these little things is in my Nudes of New York palette. Let's be honest, this is great. Are they still making Nudes of New York? This doesn't look quite as cool on my eyes as I thought it was. Smooth, blending with ease. Let it come up a little bit. 
All right, I'm not mad at that texture at all. I'm gonna skip over to the deepest color now. Let's just bop into it with the same old brush. Definitely seeing some pigment here. Wow, <laughs> that's a nice color. I'm getting burgundy, but not a super purpley burgundy. It's blending over that lighter shade and the two are just working really well together. I want to put some of that on my lid too. Flat brush. This is my Morphe flat brush. That shade has some really nice legit intensity. And we know these are my kinds of shades. Ugh. This is performing. Look at that. The dark shade alone. Okay. So we're pleased. We are pleased so far. Let's go to the middle shade. So this has that shimmer. Oh, okay. It's smooth. It's not wildly shimmery. It looks maybe a little more exciting in the pan. It's pigmented, but it's got a darkness, a real darkness there that's making me now have to blend up this way. This shade isn't like dazzling me. I wanted some contrast and I feel like this shade's almost just as dark as the rest. Like I practically look like I've got a one shadow look all over, don't I? They almost had me. This one almost reeled me back. I know I've got plenty of burgundy, come on in. And again, the bulkiness, the way every time I close that drawer, I've got to readjust because of these. That could have ended up being an absolutely stunning look with a little bit more lightness there, but instead just kind of, you know, smoky. This is not a bad look, but leaves me wanting more. It's gonna go bye-bye. I love this one size eyeliner. It's the Point Made 24 Hour Liquid Eyeliner Bodacious Black, but I think this one is on its last legs, like it just doesn't have much juice left in it. I enjoyed the heck out of this. Hey, wait, it's not that bad. Maybe it's time hasn't come yet. It's going on well. It lasts so well. What was I thinking? Maybe I went over something. You know how sometimes your eye looks have some really powdery element that fights against felt tip liners? But this, look at that, like no struggle. And by the way, I store all my liner pens flat. You not store them in a cup like this or up like this, store them flat. That's how you get the most longevity out of their juiciness. Um, okay, she stays. I really had no complaints. I just thought maybe this was gonna be the moment where I was confirming like, yeah, she's about out. But no, she's not. I have a two-step Makeup Forever mascara here. Um, one step says lift, one says volume. I recall enjoying what this did for my lashes, but we're gonna see if it's got enough life left in it, basically. The step one is a really little fine brush very small, and it kind of gives you little black primer vibes, and it is giving your lashes a little something, and it's like separating them out, and it's adding a little oomph, but not much, but it gives that second mascara something to really cling to and go on, so I'm gonna go ahead and curl my other eye and do that step. Okay, so we got that little first step done. And then we go to step two, which says volume, and it's got this kind of like cone-shaped brush, which always comes out looking like it's got quite a bit on it. And we're gonna see what this builds up. Okay, one coat over that stuff. It looks thicker, it looks longer. It's a pretty bold look. Oh my goodness. <laughs> well, what are you two up to on this fine morning at uh -huh. 5.51? Well, we want to be in your video. Yeah, we want to be in your video. Well, yeah. well, well. Love you. I love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Okay, that can be really thickening. I don't think this mascara's story is over yet. Like, look, I've got a big lash going here. The two mascaras are combining really well. It's like having a built-in little black primer, but not maybe with all the benefits of that because little black primer, that's an amazing product for a number of reasons. It seals in curl. It's an amazing little top coat that keeps 
flakes from happening. It acts as that added layer of thickness. So it's not quite what Little Black Primer is, but I like what it's offering to the main event mascara here. Although it gets a little clumpy. Like I find myself really relying on the tip over here on this left eye. It's laying down a lot in some certain little places. And it seems like the curl is continuing to stand at attention here pretty well. Doing a little Cali Ray come hell or high water on the lower lashes, which is just our norm. Should I pop on a false lash today as well? Like I'm kind of feeling falsy today. I think I'll do it. I feel like it. I'll come right back. Okay guys, I just popped on a lash. Um, it is not a half lash. It's actually a full lash. It's similar to a Demi Wispy, but a little bit thicker. And I, I don't know the style. I like found it in the bathroom. I keep using this style, taking it off. I don't know if it's pompadour might be what it is from Kiss, um, but I'm also feeling compelled once I see the finished eye look to take that dark shade, the dark matte from that little trio, and just give myself a little something here on the lower lash line. I just feel like it needs a just a little bit. Just the outside area here. Isn't it amazing what just a little bit of a shadow to that area can do? And then go back with a little more Cali Ray because I messed that up a little. Now for lips, I pulled out a couple things that I feel like I'm really going to like, but I hadn't been using. I'm thinking real similar vibes to a Superstay Matte Ink Crayon, but they're the NYX Lingerie Push-Up. And I was thinking like, do they still even make these? Like, what's the deal? And I checked on Ulta just now and they do. I have the shades Seduction and Bedtime Flirt. Okay, so I'm going to do the lighter shade first and maybe layer on the other one. Looks just like a Matte Ink Crayon and you do have a sharpener at the other end. Okay, a little bit dry feeling. Amazingly, I think I found something that completely matches the color of my shirt. Wasn't really even thinking about coordinating, but it happened. Drier than a Super Stay Matte Ink Crayon, but really feeling like it's setting in place, you know? Like when I go to do that with my lips, it's not moving around. So this is Bedtime Flirt. That's pretty. And then we've got this shade. It has a little more depth to it. Am I feeling a little tingle? Maybe just a bit. Yeah, definitely now. Feeling a little tingly action, nothing like huge. I know it's probably hard to get a good read on what color this one called Seduction is, but we're talking very similar to Maybelline's Live on the Edge. If you're sometime looking for that one, which that's probably my been my most used Superstay Matte Ink Crayon. Um, if you're ever looking for that and can't find it, this one called Seduction, it's real, real close. Dryer, not quite as pleasing of a texture to me as the Superstay Matte Ink Crayon, but the shades are exactly what I love. So finished look actually looks really good. I like the way things came together, even with the eye where I'm not keeping that eye product, but the way that ended up looking with the cheek and the lip, it all kind of coordinated, I think, pretty nicely today. Um, so what I'm keeping is in this bag and it's not very full right now. I'll just recap for you. I'm keeping the mascara and liner. Um, those were just kind of like longevity issues. Are they still going to be good? Or do they still have some juice in them and I think they do. I'm going to keep these because that was a nice little rediscovery. I love the way that lip looks. I'm going to keep the brow. That was makeup forever. I'm going to let the Huda powder stay around a little longer. I like the way the overall set look appears. It seems to be a nice looking powder on my under eye. Like it's not giving me too much of a cakey dry look. And I'm going to keep these because this just looks so pretty across the skin. Plus it's got that SPF 50. This was severely under my radar and it shouldn't stay that way. And this ABH concealer, beautifully brightening and not looking too thick at all. Again, both blended in with a beauty blender or a Milani makeup sponge. So that may have helped. Just the overall look that I'm getting that's not feeling too thick, but yet also feeling really well covered. So that's the stuff I'm holding on to. The stuff I'm letting go of, I'm going to get rid of both of these shadow blocks. The next thick it, stick it. It was just kind of its time. The Chill Out Primer, the Mist, the Tarte Blush. Pretty enough, but not an amazing texture and not a real one-of-a-kind look. And I'm also going to let go of this too. Things in this kind of stacked packaging, they will always be harder to store in your collection, I feel like. And this was good, but not like, oh my gosh. So basically a full face and it seems like we got rid of about half. That's pretty good, I think. Let me know if you guys might be doing anything similar in your collection. 
collection? Do you like to really give things another shot or are you more satisfied by just a full on purge of your makeup as you spring clean? Let me know. And thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I love you guys and I will see you again very soon. Bye.